Welcome to All About St. Paul, where we feature videos about city services, programs, entertainment, and more. He's Nick Nelson from the city's video production team. And she's Liz Wagner from St. Paul Parks and Recreation. Coming up on this week's show. It's tax season, and we have help for you. The city council has a new member. How the critters at Como are surviving the winter. Spring activities are just around the corner. And we attend this city worker's retirement party. We'll have all of those stories and a lot more coming up on All About St. Paul. We are here today at the Sun Ray branch of the St. Paul Public Library. This is one of several library locations that offer free tax preparation help. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes, but first, a change has taken place on the St. Paul City Council. After serving as the Ward 4 City Council member for 10 years, Russ Stark has taken a position in Mayor Melvin Carter's administration. Stark will serve as the city's new Chief Resilience Officer. The CRO will focus on reducing the city's carbon footprint, climate change, and energy preparedness. As before, when a member leaves, the remaining council appoints an interim member until a new replacement can be chosen in a special election. That election will take place this year on August 14th. Until then, Samantha Henningsen will serve as the new Ward 4 Council Representative. Henningsen has lived in the Ward 4 Hamlin Midway neighborhood since 2004. She has a master's degree in education with a specific focus on policy. Prior to this, she served as Councilmember Stark's legislative assistant for 10 years. For her official swearing in, Henningsen was joined at the podium by her husband Eric and two children, Calvin and Rhea. Congratulations, Councilmember. As we mentioned, we are here at the Sunray Library, one of several locations offering free tax help. Nick has more on that. I'm here with Elise Ruiz with AARP Minnesota. AARP Foundation Tax Aid partners with locations like the library to offer free tax preparation assistance to qualifying people. Elise, tell us more about that. Well, AARP Tax Aid is a great volunteer-run program. It's actually under the arm of our AARP, AARP Foundation, which is the charitable arm of the organization. So it is a free service, sort of targeted to lower-income folks, but open to the public. No requirements necessary. It is actually the nation's largest free tax assistance and preparation service um, available. So we've got over 100 sites across the state, going from way up north, northern Minnesota, down to borders of Iowa, and we've got all these great volunteers on hand, and we're at one of our fantastic sites today. So. Well, that is an excellent service you folks offer. What do folks need to know about before they come? Well, some locations will take um, appointments, so folks will have to either call um, a number and make an appointment that way or go online, make an appointment that way. Some locations are first come, first serve basis. So the best thing to do, the easiest way to find this online, Google search AARP Tax Aid. It'll bring up the first website you will see as a tax aid locator. You punch in your zip code, it'll bring you up uh, numerous options about locations in your surrounding area and then you can click on their website and see what they require as far as appointment wise goes. Including several of the St. Paul Public Library branches. Yes, we've got the Sunray branch of the Public Library, we've got the Rondo Library over on University, uh, there are a few library locations within St. Paul so good presence here. What do folks need to bring with them when they come? Folks are going to need to bring one big thing, social security card, we're also going to need a photo ID. Importantly, if you can find last year's return, you're going to want to bring that along with as well. Of course, corresponding tax form, whether it be a W-2, a 1099, W-4, what have you, but those are the documents. Big photo ID, social security card, last year's return, this year's tax documents should get you moving. Well, thanks to AARP for providing this important service free to those who need it. We are just so happy to be here, be in community to offer this incredibly valuable service. 
um, across the state. We're so happy to have our team of volunteers who go through a lot of training to help the folks that come in and need these services. So thank you so much and we hope to see you at one of our tax preparation locations. Once again, go to SPPL.org slash tax for everything you need to know. Thanks, Nick. You've probably been to Como Zoo on those busy summer days, but how are the animals surviving the winter in St. Paul? Let's find out. Como Park Zoo and Conservatory is open 365 days a year and is home to many exotic animals from around the world. Many of the animals are from warm and tropical climates, but they are still visible year round during our cold Minnesota winters. Let's go on a tour to give you a quick look at our animals' winter homes. The primate building is home to blue-eyed black lemurs, emperor tamarins, Jeffrey's tamarins, white-faced sake monkeys, orangutans, and gorillas. Be sure to say hi to little Kimala, the orangutan who just turned one. Our next stop is the African Hoofstock Building, which is home to kudu, zebras, and giraffes. Check out Francis the Giraffe, who was born in August of 2015 and is growing at the rate of approximately five inches per month. On your way to the Cat Building, you can see an Arctic fox or two enjoying the winter weather in their beautiful white coats. The Cat Building features indoor viewing areas for the tigers, cougars, and lions. After you leave the cat building, you can see some of the animals that are suited for the colder temperatures. The reindeer, dolls, sheep, and bison all have thick coats to keep them warm in the Minnesota weather. And of course, polar bears Buzz and Neil love the winter. Lastly, in the aquatics building, you can see African penguins, puffins, seals, and sea lions. This is where Sparky spends her winters. As you can see, if you're brave enough to adventure in the winter, there are lots of animals to see here at Como Zoo. Someone should tell those animals that warmer weather is right around the corner. That's right, and you can embrace the season with a bunch of spring activities at your local recreation center. St. Paul Parks and Recreation is offering a wide variety of fun spring-themed events. Join us as we hop into springtime with egg hunts, gardening classes, lunch with the bunny, and more. This year, the bunny will even be delivering his eggs by helicopter at one of our rec center locations. Go to stpaul.gov slash spring events to find out more. Well, those all sound like a ton of fun. Well, believe it or not, registration for summer sports are happening right now as well. Sign up March 1st through March 31st for softball, baseball, lacrosse, t-ball and near ball. Go to stpaul.gov slash parks and click on athletics. Also coming up on Saturday, April 21st is the citywide spring cleanup. This is your chance to join together with friends, family and neighbors to pick up all that trash that you find once the snow melts. Let's take a look at this video from last year's event and stay tuned to find out how you can get involved. We love our parks, we love our, we love our green space, we're proud of our city, uh, and we want to make it look as good as possible. What a beautiful day that we have for our cleanup. It's kind of perfect, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, the sun is shining. It feels like spring finally, and so we are out 1,100 strong across the city of St. Paul to make sure that we uh, get out there and take care of our parks. The fact of the matter is, uh, as much as we want to, to uh, keep our parks clean, unless we have the help of folks like you, uh, it's really hard to do because they're, they're just, you know, we got a lot of parks in the city of St. Paul, we got a lot of space to cover. And the great thing about St. Paul is we can always count on our residents to come out and help us out on these things. We uh, get rid of all the uh, detritus that has gathered over the, uh, the course of the winter. It is really great to see. 
The most important and initial part of this cleanup is you've got to help us clean up those donuts. We don't want any of those donuts going home. Uh, so make sure you grab a donut on the way because cleaning up is hard work. Thank you so much for being here and let's keep on uh, making St. Paul great and keeping it clean. Thank you so much. The 2018 Citywide Spring Cleanup is Saturday, April 21st. You can pick up bags, gloves, and snacks and meet your neighbors at one of eight cleanup sites. Then head out and clean up your park or neighborhood of choice. Find out more and pre-register your participation at stpaul.gov slash citywide cleanup. In other news, the St. Paul Police Department recently celebrated the retirement of one of their own albeit the four-legged variety. At a ceremony performed recently at a farm in Afton, Minnesota, Police Horse Jet was officially retired after 14 years with the St. Paul Police Department. Taking his place is Moose, who was donated to the Mounted Patrol Unit by Barbara and Craig Rutschow of Red Wing, Minnesota. Officer Jen Mink rode Jet for three and a half years until his retirement and now rides Moose. Mounted officers and horses are especially effective for crowd and traffic control, but spend most of their time performing all the regular duties of a cop on the beat. St. Paul currently has five mounted patrol officers. The unit has been in service since 1995, operating full time throughout the year. Congratulations, Jet. Enjoy retirement. Well, we end our show with a celebration of all things green and Irish. St. Paul's St. Patrick's Day Parade is one of the biggest, and it's coming up March 17th. Let's take a look at last year's event to get you ready. As usual, you can find all the city's videos online at youtube.com slash St. Paul Gov. See you next time. Hey, nice hat. I love the hair. <laughs> Thank you.